Today, I'm showing you the differences between a young thimbleberry and a young beaked hazelnut. They are very different plants, many of which volunteer on my property because animals love planting them. But sometimes I have to do a double take to tell them apart, only in the winter, of course, because their leaves are very different. So this is a thimble. You may see a standalone stem, but very quickly, at least here, it forms a thicket. Unlike all other plants of the Rubus genus, it is thornless, so at least it has that advantage, even though I mostly don't want it due to its aggressive nature. It's edible and great tasting, but it doesn't produce a lot of berries. Its ratio of foliage to berries, considering how much space it wants to take up, is too unsatisfactory for me. The deer love it, so it can make a great decoy plant outside your deer fence if you don't mind managing it. Or you can keep it contained somehow, like within some concrete. Its leaves are famous for being large and soft, so you can use it as toilet paper in a pinch. In fact, you might be able to spot the leaves underneath it. So this is how it looks decomposing. It's still very soft. You can eat the shoots like asparagus, and the young leaves are medicinal, as are others in the rubus genus. In the winter, the plant just kind of looks dead. The twigs are brown or tan. The bark is smooth and the buds are alternately arranged. The buds are narrowly oval and covered with soft white hairs at the tips. The bud scales don't entirely enclose the bud. And the bud placement can give the twigs a jointed or zigzag look. And they can have a slight curl near the terminal bud. Now, you won't always see it, but on this one, I can spot one. And that is down here. And it's the gall. So this is a dead giveaway, if you can see one of these. The wasp lays its eggs in the stem, and then as the larvae grow, it enlarges. So if you were to cut that open, you would see the wasp larva inside growing. There's only been one year where I've had a major wasp problem, where I had to trap them. And that year, it was something that was talked about canny-wide. It seemed to be an event that wasn't just on my property. Because the wasp is native, some people would probably be sensitive to you taking them out. And they can also be beneficial for your garden, so you always want to have some wasps to take care of a pest problem or to prevent a pest problem from occurring. This is a young beaked hazelnut or western hazelnut. The bark is also light brown. The young stems are covered with fine hairs that are more prominent towards the tips. And it's, the camera is probably not going to pick them up. The buds are also alternately arranged. The bud scales also don't entirely enclose the bud which apparently give it a beaked look. But again, I don't think this camera is going to pick it up because I'm too lazy to learn the zoom function. At the tip of the bud, you will also see some soft white hairs. So here you can also see some remnant leaves. You see it's smaller. It also has fuzzy leaves, but they're too small to be used as toilet paper like you can with the thimble. Right next to it, I have a much larger hazelnut. And just like the thimble has its galls, which identify it, the hazelnut has catkins, which are a dead giveaway. But look how big this plant has to be to have a catkin. And this one, I don't see any on it. The similarities between the two plants are the color, the furry buds, and the zigzag appearance. So you can see here, the hazelnut is branching. So it's branching out here, here, and here. But with the thimbleberry, you're just going to see singular stems with few, if any, branching. The buds on the thimbleberry are longer, and the buds on the hazelnut, which is this one, are rounder. But you will notice that they're both hairy. Even though the camera might not pick it up, the hazelnut has more noticeable hairs on the young stems. 
and one has the galls while the other one has the catkins. Anyway, you can imagine when they are very young, when they're just a single stem and it hasn't had a chance to form a thicket or to form branches and they don't have catkins or galls, the only way to really tell them apart is just by looking at the buds or by looking at the hairs. Either way, I try to take them out when they're young because they will become problems later. Also, I figure if I'm gonna get a hazelnut, I'm gonna get a cultivar with bigger nuts.